just got my hair cut and I feel like it's very whoosh. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? I am gonna be going on holiday very soon for a week, so I've got my holiday shirt on to get into the holiday mood. And I have a big group of new books, some of which I have bought for myself, some of which publishers have kindly sent me, and I'm gonna go through and discuss them all and why I'm so interested in reading all of them. And I'd love to know your opinion if you've read any of these and would recommend them, if you're looking forward to reading any of these as well, and if you would suggest Suggest that I take any of these with me on holiday uh, to read because um, it should be a fairly relaxing time. I'm hoping to get some good reading time in. So first off there is The Odyssey by Laura Williams uh, which has a cover with a very holiday vibe uh, though I think it's uh, been meant to be a much more like interesting and like serious story than just kind of a frivolous holiday read. Uh, so it's about a woman, a young woman that works on a luxury cruise ship and does a number of different jobs and has worked a number of different jobs in her life and hasn't done any of them all that well so she's kind of drifting along and till at one point on this uh, luxury cruise ship uh, she gets uh, joined to join a mentorship scheme which gets increasingly weird and I've never read this author's work before I heard really good things about her previous novel Supper Club uh, to make that she makes you know really good observations about sort of modern uh, life Life. And the author Zeba Talkani, um, who I love and who's a lovely friend of mine, um, calls this astonishing, subversive, and darkly funny. The Odyssey is another dazzler of a novel from the bold and highly perceptive Laura Williams. And I'd actually contemplated working on a cruise ship myself at one point when, uh, for a while, I worked as a massage therapist. And uh, so, you know, there's like massage therapists and um, therapy rooms on cruise ships. And so I thought, Oh, it would be a really fun thing to work on a cruise ship. But I, I've heard that working conditions on cruise ships aren't actually all that great. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's, it's good I didn't make that choice. Next is a novel I'm so excited about, uh, which is The Absolute by Danielle Guebo, uh, who is an Argentinian novelist. And this is a multi-generational saga, and I love those. And this goes all the way from 18th century Russia and Europe uh, to to Argentina in in the 20th and um, 21st century I, I think following successive generations of this family many of whom are different artists in different fields and making different discoveries and yeah just following the the lineage of creativity um, through this family line which yeah sounds so fascinating and uh, really interestingly this author uh, has a real big interest in Japanese culture and he actually owns a sushi restaurant. Things They Lost by Akwiri Odoar and uh, this is uh, by a Kenyan novelist um, who currently lives in Germany and it's the the story of a girl who has been kind of overburdened and lived a very lonely life uh, under her mother and how she's trying to get away from that and sort of escape um, the conditions of her her upbringing and it's a story that moves between uh, this kind of realistic world and th then also moves within folklore and myth I think there's like the uh, it introduces some like ghosts into the story and yeah just has such a gorgeous cover sounds like such a fascinating story um, so yeah, I'm really keen to read this. Drift by Carol Lewis and this is also a novel about a woman that has lived quite an isolated life and she's a bit of an enigma even to her own brother that she lives with and she feels a much stronger connection to the sea than to, to land and one day she meets a Syrian man who she forms a connection with and uh, so it's about their this uh, loving relationship uh, but also also how they form a connection across two different cultures and interestingly this author has written a number of books I think in Welsh um, but this is the first novel that she's written in English. Electra by Jennifer Saint and this is a novel which is a retelling of a Greek myth uh, about Electra obviously but also two other women Cassandra and Clemenestra and Electra is the daughter of Clemenestra and Agnemenon 
Yan. I always have difficulty pronouncing his name and lots of these names from Greek myths. Uh, but yeah, it's, she comes from this, this family, which there's been a lot of bloodletting and violence, and she is trying to escape her fate and the, the fate of the the inheritance of all of that that violence and so um, yeah she gives this new version of that story and uh, she is Jennifer Saint um, also wrote the the novel Ariadne um, which I never got around to, to reading but had a lot of acclaim and a lot of people loved it so you know within this these retellings of Greek myths that have been coming out um, you know these are meant to be some of the better ones. The Candy House by Jennifer Egan and this is a novel about a man that is a tech entrepreneur that capitalizes on this method where people can download and externalize their memories and so it's about the consequences of that and it involves some characters that were in her previous novel A Visit from the Goon Squad which I haven't read yet and I probably should read before reading this new novel but I've also read uh, Jennifer Egan's uh, novel Manhattan Beach which I really loved so I've been wanting to read more of her writing and it has such a cool cover uh, so you can see on the inside of it uh, it's really funky and colorful but there's this peekaboo on the, the cover where uh, you can see that and yeah I just think that's really fun. Song for the Missing by Pierre Jarawan and this is a novel uh, set in 2011 in Lebanon uh, when two bodies are discovered and that sets off even more unrest within the, the country and it's about a man who's recounting his personal memories of the country and how it got to this place. And uh, so the author is uh, the, the son of German and Lebanese uh, parents and uh, he, he li he's lived in Germany I think for, for many years but um, this is obviously his, him contemplating and writing about um, his Lebanese heritage. There's a new reprint of a classic novel which was first published in 1962 uh, which is Beautiful Star by Yukio Mishima and this is novel sounds quite wild and I love the, the cover for it because it seems to really see the subject matter of this family um, who are kind of outcasts and uh, within their community and are known to be a bit eccentric and this family comes to believe that they all come from different planets each member of the family comes from a different planet so they go on this mission to try to find others of their kind and also to try to save humanity from the atomic bomb so yeah it sounds like quite a wild story and I've, I've read a couple of things by Mishima before and really enjoy uh, the colorfulness of his writing. The Handsome Jew by Ali al Mukri, and this is a novel about a Jewish man and a Muslim woman uh, living in Yemen who meet and fall in love and about the difficulty of their trying to form this relationship across religious divides within the, the country. And uh, this is published by Dar Arab Press um, who are bringing a lot of Middle Eastern literature to the UK which is a really great thing. Shadow Girls by Carol Birch and I'm so excited to read this book because I really enjoyed the author's previous novel uh, Jam Ratch's Menagerie and this is the story of two girls and female friendship in the 1960s and they're quite rebellious girls uh, that uh, yeah, get into a lot of trouble and one day one of them thinks she encounters a ghost and so it's about their experiences with that and this author's writing is so vibrant and creative that I'm really looking forward to reading more of her work. Then I have a debut collection of short stories called Polluted Sex by Lauren Foley who's an Irish and Australian author and these are stories obviously involving a whole range of different characters but many of them uh, involve depictions of women's bodies and sexuality. Uh, the author is a self proclaimed bisexual um, so it gives this modern view of Irish uh, girlhood and womanhood. Theater of Marvels by Lillian Dillsworth and this is about a mixed race woman that becomes an actress and a performer in Victorian London and about the tension of being applauded and admired uh, for, for that but for perhaps for the, the wrong reasons and on the inside cover um, it shows a, a map of Victoria 
story in London and key places within the, the plot. And uh, so yeah, I just think that's a, a really cool thing in this edition. There Are More Things by Yara Rodriguez, Ro I have real trouble saying her name, Rodriguez. Fowler. And this is a novel about two different women. One is from the UK and one is from Brazil and how they each had difficult childhoods in their families. So it's about the challenges of that inheritance, but how they find friendship uh, and sisterhood and queerness um, together. And so looking at the past and looking towards the, the future. And I'd read this or I'd started reading this author's debut novel and didn't really get on with it um, but I thought she had a really unique point of view so I'm I am keen to try uh, her new fiction. Very Cold People by Sarah Mangasso and this is a novel about a woman named Ruth that has lived under parents who have discounted her and demeaned her um, throughout her, her life so it's about her struggle to escape that and uh, she lives in New, New England um, so I'm quite keen to read this because I come from New England as well. The Arena of the Unwell by Liam Conman and this is a novel about a 20-something man named Noah uh, who lives in London and is kind of adrift. He works in a record shop and he gets involved in a relationship with two older men in the indie music scene and it's about the complication of their relationship. So yeah it's a modern gay uh, story and I'm just very keen to read it. <laughs> the Book of Difficult Fruit Fruit Fruit. The Book of Difficult Fruit by Kate Lebo and this is a paperback uh, edition of a book which came out last year uh, which is a, a kind of oddity um, which is a book a uh, collection of 26 essays about different weird fruits and information about them and what they say about our culture but they also include recipes for these different fruits uh, including gooseberries um, which I here in England, I love going gooseberry picking um, when I go fruit picking um, in the, the summer. And so there's a recipe for gooseberry and elder, elderflower frozen fool, um, which sounds quite good. And I might try uh, after reading this book and going fruit picking. On a more serious side, I have a few different new books that are all about death and grieving. Uh, so the first is called Lost and Found by Katherine Schultz. And I've heard really great things uh, about this book, which is um, a memoir about the, the author's life when uh, she loses her father and very soon after she meets and the woman that um, she goes on to, to marry. So it's about you know how we lose and find things in our life and about the, the consequences of that. And it's meant to be really profound. Don't Put Yourself on Toast by Freddie Taylor. And this is also a memoir about uh, the, the author's life in his early 20s uh, when his father um, was diagnosed with an aggressive form of brain cancer and so it's following the story of that but also about seeing the lighter side of life amidst all of this darkness and really interestingly the author lives in an area of London which is very close to, to me so so yeah I'm quite keen to read this. And then there is Regrets of the Dying by Georgina Schull and this is uh, about the, the author's experience when uh, a number of years ago she came very close to dying herself and this made her contemplate the, the experience of coming so close to death and uh, to confront that or, or question that um, she goes to interview a number of people who are also like quite close to death or have come quite close to death and about their experiences and reflections on on that so it's yeah, contemplating the state of, of being near the end of your life and finally I just wanted to show that there's a new in here in the UK there's a new paperback edition of the paper palace by Miranda Cowley Heller now this novel which is on currently on the Women's Prize long list for fiction and you know which might make it to the shortlist later this week uh, there's been a lot of controversy about this book you know especially between me and Anna James when we've had arguments and discussions about it where I found it to be a very moving and effective novel about a woman that is uh, contemplating this this past of abuse and her relationship with a, a man that she's known for many years against the relationship she currently has a loving relationship 
relationship she currently has with her husband and yeah I found it very effective but Anna had a lot of issues with it but uh, but yeah this is the new paperback of the the novel which I think is quite lovely you know as opposed to uh, this hardback edition so these are the the two different editions but yeah I really like this and I think it's really reflective of the the story itself which takes place in this campground um, on this lake. So those are all the new books I have. Uh, like I said, let me know if you're keen on reading any of these books as well. Uh, let me know about that in the comments below or if you'd really root for me to take any of these on my holiday that I'm taking soon. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that and bun bundling as many books as I can into my suitcase without going over the weight limit. You know, that's always a big concern. But I hope you're doing well and that you also get some relaxing time off soon to do some good reading and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.